some of our previous videos, we spoke a lot about suspensions and it's still gonna continue for a while. The suspension system is an important part of a vehicle. Some of the most common components of the suspension system that we know are the coil springs, leaf springs, air springs and even torsion springs. Generally there are two types of suspension systems, the front suspension and the rear suspension. The front suspension is again classified as independent front suspension and rigid axle front suspension. But today we'll just talk about the independent front suspension. The independent front suspension is further divided into longitudinal suspension, transverse suspension, sliding suspension, parallelogram type suspension, trailing link suspension and vertical guide suspension. Let's start with the longitudinal independent front suspension. Here a helical spring is used and is connected between the U-shaped wishbone. The inner end of the upper wishbone is connected to the hydraulic damper and the outer end is hinged to the stub axle carrier. The lower wishbone is provided with enough length which provides enough constant track even when the wheels lift. The second type is a transverse independent front suspension. This figure illustrates transverse independent front suspension system arrangement. Its usage was well known in the Ford Motor Company products from 1908 to 1948. At the front portion of the vehicle, two trailing arms are connected transversely one above the other. The stub axle assembly is connected to the end of the arms and radius rods were used to support the center line of the vehicle. The third type is the sliding type independent front suspension. This type of suspension was used in lightweight cars. They were first used by the Corville automobiles in 1898. The stub axle and the wheels were attached to a vertical pillar. So the stub axle would move up and down and in case of steering, the stub axle itself rotates. But the disadvantage is that the wheel track changes with different suspension movements. The fourth type of independent front suspension is the parallelogram type suspension. Here, a stub axle carrier connects the upper and lower wishbone. The length of the lower wishbone is longer than the upper wishbone and both may not be parallel. Various arrangements like coil, leaf and torsion springs are used. Since coil springs are used universally in cars, let's illustrate with the help of that. The spring is fixed to the lower wishbone and the cross member. So, the vehicle's weight is transferred through the cross member to the springs and then to the lower wishbone. So let's list down the advantages of this type. Constantly maintain a track. It enhances the tire life and better cornering characteristics can be obtained. But the disadvantage in this type is that when the wheels are cornering, the body leans outwards and results in undesired steering effects and sometimes adverse tire wear. The next one is the fifth type, the trailing link independent front suspension. Here, one end of the coil spring is attached to a trailing arm and the other end to a shaft which is pivoted to the trailing arm. The wheel hub is connected to the end of this shaft. So when the wheels move up and down, it tends to wind and unwind the coil springs. Sometimes these coil springs are replaced with torsion bars. Now for the last and sixth type is the vertical guide suspension. Here, the kingpin is directly connected to the cross member. Depending upon the movement of the wheel, the kingpin slides up and down, thereby compressing or elongating the spring. The disadvantage of this type is that it is less stable. So that's it about the different types. Now, we'll look at the advantages and disadvantages of independent front suspensions as a whole. Its advantages are they are provided with greater resilience and better springing action than the rigid axle vehicles. When the independent suspension turns about the kingpin, the tendency of the wheel rotating is reduced due to the gyroscopic effect and the wheel wobbling is reduced as well. The independent front suspension is arranged with sufficient distance apart so that they give more space for engine accommodation and also satisfy understeer conditions. 
Next, a greater degree of vertical springing movement is provided and the springing movement is not transmitted to other wheels. Also, the unsprung weight is reduced and it improves the riding quality and road hold while turning or braking. Now, let's get into the disadvantages. The steering geometry alignment is more critical and requires frequent attention. The camber angle and the body roll reduces the cornering performance. The independent front suspension requires a rigid chassis and the steering linkage and the pivot points are complicated. So the suspension system as a whole is expensive. So that's it for this video guys. See you in the next one which is about the next type of front suspension. So stay tuned and until the next time, bye.